Jesus and two Pharisees were sitting in a boat on the Sea of Galilee when they challenged Jesus to demonstrate a better miracle than they could. The first Pharisee took off his cap and tossed it in the water. He then reached into the water and pulled out the hat. Miraculously, both the cap and his hand were completely dry. The second Pharisee took off his cap and tossed it 10 yards away from the boat. He dove into the water, swam to the cap, picked it up and returned to the boat. Again, completely dry. Jesus tosses his cap 100 yards away from the boat. He walks on the water to retrieve, walks back and gets into the boat once again, completely dry. The next day, the Jerusalem Post's headline was, Jesus can't swim. <laughs> he is God, you know, they may not know that. <laughs> he could walk on the water. So my brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration, you know. If you remember, every year, the second Sunday of Lent, we read the gospel of the transfiguration story every year. And then August the 6th, we celebrate the feast of the transfiguration. This year it fell on Sunday. Uh, and then thirdly, from 2002, St. John Paul II gave us the luminous mysteries. Every Thursday we pray the luminous mysteries of the rosary. And the fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration of the Lord. You see, this is very important feast. So that is why on Sunday, this takes precedence. So my brothers and sisters, our primary goal in life is to get to heaven and to take as many people as possible with us. That is our primary goal in life. We may have many, many goals in life, you know, like family entertainment, sports, uh, you know, pleasure, money. All these are mini goals, but our primary goal in life is to get to heaven and to take as many people as possible with us. So the transfiguration of Jesus gives a foretaste of what heaven is. We all would like to know what is heaven, is there heaven, how it would be. So the transfiguration story gives us a foretaste how the heaven would be. So transfiguration means a change of form, metamorphosis. You know, those who study science, they you know caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Change of form, you know, completes the change of substance. So that's why Jesus is revealing his true identity, who he really is. So the story of the transfiguration reveals two truths. One, it reveals who Jesus is, his identity, his divinity, and where he belongs. That's the first truth, you know. And the second truth is, heaven is our destiny where we belong. You know, heaven is our destiny. That is where we belong. You know, those who use Fitbits, you know, I read an article, if you walk 10,000 steps a day, you can remain healthy, you know? No, no blood pressure, no sugar, everything. I used to have it. I need to get back my Fitbit too, you know? I like to walk 10,000 steps a day to keep healthy. We may live 100, 103, 105, but still we have to live someday because our destiny our real home where we spend for eternity is heaven. St. Paul beautifully says, you know, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for those who love him. That's how beautiful, you know, it is. Now, brothers and sisters, who Jesus is, who Jesus is matters and it is significant. A man published a list of the 10 greatest thinkers in history. He listed Socrates, 
Plato, Aristotle, Newton, Einstein, etc. The name of Jesus was missing. So many Christians wrote to the author and asked him why he did not include the name of Jesus in the list. The man replied, Christ is in a class above all others. You know, he obviously was from above. He did not have to think. He never faced a problem of morals and ethics that he had to stop and think out. So Jesus is from above. You know, that is why his name was not listed. So Jesus is different from the founders of other religions. No other religion's founder was pre-announced except Jesus. No other, you know, religion's founder was pre-announced. As we heard in the first reading today, Prophet Daniel already spoke about the transfiguration, the real glory of the Son of Man, you know, 300 years before the birth of Christ. No other religion's founder died for our sins. Did any religion's founder died for our sins except Jesus? I don't think so. I mean, they have a lot of good things, you know. You know, what is right, what is wrong. Many religions teach us, but only uh, Jesus Christ died for our sins. So there is the difference. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus himself said, you know, the Father and I are one. And Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, no other religion's founder said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the... They taught about truth, you know, but nobody said, I am. So when Jesus said, I am, he already identifying himself, how God spoke to Moses, you know, I am who I am. That's what Jesus is saying. I am the same God who appeared to Moses at the burning bush. Now at the transfiguration story, brothers and sisters, why were Moses and Elijah present with Jesus on the mountain? You know, many people thought Jesus as the new Moses. And many people thought, you know, Elijah did not die. He was taken up to heaven. So many people thought, you know, maybe Jesus is the new Moses or the Elijah who did not die has come back. So Jesus had Moses and Elijah on his right and left to say, I am not Moses, I am not Elijah. I am more than Moses and I am more than Elijah. And secondly, you know, many people complained that Jesus was violating the Mosaic law because Jesus healed many people on the Sabbath and the Pharisees were complaining, you know, on Sabbath, a doctor cannot practice his profession because healing is the profession of the physicians. So a doctor on the Sabbath in the Jewish faith, he cannot practice his profession. So Jesus was healing people. So Pharisees were up in arms, you know, you cannot do what is forbidden on the Sabbath. So many people were complaining that he is violating the Mosaic law. So Jesus had Moses to say, I am not violating Mosaic law. You see, I have Moses with me. <laughs> you see? So, uh, and then why did Jesus take Peter, James, and John, and not the other nine of the apostles? You know, he should have taken all the 12 up to the mountain so that they would have all seen. St. Thomas Aquinas gives us the reason why he took Peter, James, and John. Peter, because he loved Jesus. And Jesus loved John, the beloved disciple, you know. John is called the beloved disciple. Peter loved Jesus, and Jesus loved John. And then James was the first apostle to die for Christ. The inner circle, you know, the three. That is why uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. Finally, brothers and sisters, what is the purpose of the Feast of Transfiguration? The purpose of the Feast of Transfiguration, it just happened just before 
Jesus predicted about his own passion and death. You know, at uh, Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked, who do people say that I am? Some said, you know, John the Baptist, some Elijah, some one of the prophets. And Peter confessed, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said, the son of man has to suffer, die, and then rise again. Peter said, no, no, Lord, you cannot suffer. And then G Jesus said, G get behind me, Satan. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And then Jesus took them up where he was transfigured. So the purpose of the transfiguration is to give encouragement and strengthen the faith of the apostles when Jesus was going to suffer and die. You know, so that they already know that Jesus predicted what was going to happen, to prepare them, to make them strong, to strengthen their faith. So today, how does it apply to us, brothers and sisters? There is so much negativity going on in the world today, you know? Lot of changes are happening in the world. So the transfiguration story, Jesus strengthens our faith. He makes us strong, you know, that we can get through it. What is more important is our destiny, getting to heaven. Like the father said, you know, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So with all the negativity, we have to listen to Jesus alone. And we may have to suffer, we may have challenges. You see, Jesus himself suffered and died. But we will face challenges too, but we will reach our destiny. The cross is necessary in our lives. We cannot reach Easter Sunday without going through Good Friday. No cross, no crown, no thorn, no throne, no pain, no gain. <laughs> so that tells it all, you know. So my brothers and sisters, um, after reflecting on the transfiguration of Jesus, let us ask ourselves, does, you know, my image of who Jesus has changed? Is Jesus really the same or is image changed? And then, what mountain of experiences has God given me? Number of times, you know, God might have, you know, spoken to us through the scriptures, through the Eucharist. It's called mountain of experience. Uh, you know, ask yourself some mountain of experience that he has given to you. God bless you all. Amen.